Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecaster here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, July 9, 2020. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. We have stuff, we have stuff on the docket. This is going to be a good one. So we have a couple of lines running across the screen. Those are from last night, 311 to 310. By now, you already know what happened. We'll get to that later. But first, what we want to do is cover the first thing that jumps off the page on the daily chart. What is it? Well, there's actually something, and believe it or not, it's in the bullish camp. The market went down today and bounced up not to make new highs, not to even get close to even, but it bounced up to close basically where it was yesterday for the most part. So nothing has really changed from the daily chart perspective. When you use closing prices, and it's always how they close them that's important, what changed from yesterday? So price is down a little bit from yesterday. So what? It's still the same general thing going on. You're above all the moving averages, and at present, the market is essentially building energy to go higher to fill the gap at 319. That's the look of the market. That's the reading of the tape. That's off the daily chart, and there's other stuff. That's at first blush. That's what we see when we just make an initial assessment. What else do we have? What do we have down south? Well, interestingly enough, and we find this happens over and over and over again, which is why we end up talking about it over and over and over again. There was a gap that was missed. So there was a gap, or there is a gap, on the daily chart here that comes in at 310.52. Today's low happens to come in at 310.68. The end was a little off the page there. It was 310.68 on low. So we missed the gap and they rally away from it. Two ways to read that, obviously. One way is it's bullish and they're going to keep going. They're not going to hit the gap anytime soon and they'll do 319 first. Remember the title from last night's video. Which gap first? The second way, or plan B, it was the trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew, a la shenanigans. They miss it by a little bit, and we know the routine. There are traders waiting for the gap for a multitude of reasons. They don't get it there. Therefore, a whole plethora of traders get screwed as a result of not getting to the gap. But plan B would be to go get the gap on a second wave lower. Maybe it's tomorrow. Maybe it's into next week. Why do I think they'll go get the gap down below? Well, you also have a big fat round number to contend with. It was ES3100, if you remember, also from last night's video inside the numbers. Members heard me harping on that. Not just today, but I harp. I harp on the big fat round numbers. I guess you could say... I'm a harper. So we know about the south. We know about the north. There's a gap down south. There's a gap up north. Price is somewhere in between right now. By the way, just as a point of interest, I think it's important to note that if you recall from last night's video, we discussed the fact that if the market were to come down, where would likely find garden variety support? Where would it go to and where would we find or where would support be for the market between 310 and 311? I'm quite certain we discuss this. Now, keep in mind, when we discuss these numbers, these are step one numbers. Do they have to be the end of a decline? No, they don't. Do they have to be the only support along the way? No, they don't. They're a number or a zone in this case that was pointed out. That was, at least from where I sit, pretty obvious, and that turned out to be the case. Once again, why is it obvious? Well, here's a picture of the S&P E-mini futures chart, and we're talking about the big fat round number of 3,100. Low today was 3,105 and a quarter, and again, it's the same routine as the gaps. We know sometimes they spike them through by a few points or even more. Sometimes they come up short by a few points, rally them away, sometimes they hit it to the T. You never know which one it's going to be. That's why we come in uniform, ready to play, with the information in hand, like that kind of stuff. While we have this chart up on the screen, remember, 3177.75 is the high of this breakdown candle. They like to go back and test highs of breakdown candles. We know that. So what did they do? They went back to test the high of the breakdown candle, and they're now just hovering underneath. 
just because they moved off of it a few points, but yet staying above all the moving averages, technically speaking, it's still in an uptrend, and there's nothing wrong with the market, but they have to build energy to bust through if they're going to bust through this breakdown candle high. Where does the need come from to bust through the breakdown candle high? Well, we go back to the SPY chart. There's a gap at 319. Doesn't show on this chart. I use both charts. There are a variety of reasons, and they constantly or are ever-changing the reasons why I use both charts. Sometimes it's to get a handle on the numbers early in the morning for inside the numbers members. Why? Because the market might have moved a lot overnight and we have to use some of the overnight activity to find that resistance or support area that are important to those traders looking for that quote unquote early morning trade. What else we got? Well, we narrow it down to an hourly chart. We looked at this last night. We talked about the moving averages down there that came into that zone there was a small bucket full or short stack full or even a medium stack full of reasons why this zone would be supportive of price. Therefore, nobody should be surprised that the market found stability and bounced away from this zone. Remember, we had that same gap situation. The gap was missed. They're going to come do it. There was a lot of reasons why this zone made sense. You had moving averages. You had other things. You had the chart vibration we discussed. If you don't know what that is, go reread or rewatch yesterday's video. Method to the madness. We're going to switch over to inside the numbers and let's take a look at a couple of specific things. This is the early morning commentary. This is the pre cup of coffee stuff. This is where they're floating around. These are what's called the really early thoughts. We'll scroll up a little bit. You can read the rest. What I urge you to do is read everything, and certainly today, if for no other day, do it today. Read the notes, go back to the charts, see what the market did, but not only what it did, where it did it. Go to the specific numbers. Look at the numbers that are on the board, go back to the chart, and see what happened at those numbers. Today was a numbers day. Take note right here, 315.20. 315.40. You're going to see that kind of stuff come up late in the day. The first one here, 315.40, goes up a little bit, but 315.20 comes into play a number of times. The early thoughts, based on what the market is doing in the pre-market, it's awareness stuff. We don't know exactly what's going to happen before the opening bell. What we do know is what's likely to happen up north, what's likely to happen down south, we come in uniform, pre-prepared, we come ready to go, moving right along. And right here, we can see that the low at 9.50 in the morning is 3.15.35. The green line represents 3.15.40. Here we go. So run with me on this because you're going to see more of that come into play today. Today, we had pretty good, and what I'll use the word, cadence. We had pretty good cadence with the S&P today. Not so much with the stocks on the move. We'll get to that later. Let's continue moving along. By 10 o'clock, basically what we're saying is it's quiet. The area that was supposed to be support was support. Now the market seems to be at time moving back higher. So we're talking about resistance. Okay, let's move it along. Now let's take notice of the 1011 post. Here's a good example of what the summer doldrums look like. It was quiet until it wasn't. After the morning mini rush, they've already settled into a chop shop formation after finding initial support. Same resistance cited applies, around 317, give or take. Below the low of day opens the door for a 314.50 test. Back to the chart, so we move the goalpost. The green line is moved down to 314.50. Here, the low in this candle at 1025 was 314.58. Then you got about a 10 S&P handle bounce from there, and then the market scaled down. Let's go back to the notes. Now, the 1018 post is probably the most important post all day long. Short-term candle closes below, and they'll pick up speed. Below what? 314.50. Remember from last night's video, 311 to 310, not out of the question. They won't and don't make it easy 
They'll bounce along the way, but today they really didn't. They kind of went straight there. But they're working on opening the door to more selling pressure and lower numbers. 314.50 is pretty important. Back to the chart for a second, we have to understand the timing of that. That was 10.18. The market was on its way down. They didn't get to 314.50 and bounced, but we already knew the game. Once they got below, closing below, closing short-term candles below, that was all she wrote. 311 to 310 is on the table. Sometimes they'll take all day to get there, and sometimes, like today, they get her done quickly, moving right along. Now, the first hour closes, so this is before the market really fell out of bed. We're reading the tape. We're reading the hourly chart, reading the hourly candle. The first hour candle closed. What did they give us? It's reversal-ish. 314.50 was, in fact, support, at least for a nice bounce. Funny how that works. I love to throw that in there. Guess what? That's our gateway to lower numbers and a bearish kind of day. Moving right along. So we know the rest, what was taking place for the remainder of the morning. We'll just continue scrolling up because what I really want to do is just highlight a couple of really, really important points. But I do want you to read the rest. If you're at all active or would like to be active in the market during the day, this is something that really puts value in your pocket. 1059, no change. They're just doing the thing down around 311, 310. Now here, you'll notice it's unlikely they're done on the downside. So that's of note. Rallies, rips come out of nowhere. It's expected. So we know when the market sells off, you get these sharp rallies out of nowhere. The buy the dip crowd, short squeezes, all of the above. That's just the way the market works. But what I start noting here is that they haven't satisfied the big fat round number of 3,100. So I still am in the camp that they'll do that. They came up short today. It's like coming up short of a gap and then going down to get it later. Can they go higher first and then come down to do it? Of course they can. I just think they'll do it. And we're going to go back to another chart that's going to hopefully help explain why I feel that way. Let me run through the rest of the notes. 11.37 of note. They likely put in a late morning low. Here's a 10-minute chart. You can see 11.30. There's your late morning low. I didn't necessarily know, nor did anybody else, whether that low would stick all day or not. But at least a mid-morning to late morning low, uh, mid-morning to late morning pivot, whether a low or high, is usually good for a while. Usually good for a couple of hours, three hours, through lunch, something. Moving right along. So as they move back up, what are we doing? We're citing where the resistance is, which brings me to my next point. 315.20. You'll see it all day long on this page, probably 8, 10, maybe a dozen times. Back to the magenta, fuchsia, whatever that is. 315.20. But wait, there's more. You always have to be pre-prepared. You have to be prepared in uniform. You have to have all the numbers. So here we go. How about 315.55, just in case they get through 315.20. There's that one. What's the high? Right here, 315.54. No accidents nor coincidences. Interestingly enough, when they rallied up at the end of the day, so this became a rodeo into the end of the day, but here, what's the high? The high happens to be 315.19. Are you kidding me? There are no accidents. There are no coincidences with the market. And then we run into the end of the day and you see the rest. And let's also take a look at stocks on the move real quick. Here's the deal. Every day we take a look at everything. There's no mystery here. We take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. So there were two that hit their price objectives today. It was T, AT&T, and Walgreens Boots, WBA. What did AT&T do? Nothing. You know what it did? It went down, got its hair cut, went to the destination, a little bit lower, but came right back to the destination and did what? Hung out for a cup of coffee. Instead of going back in the other direction, it's likely going to another destination. That happens. We know that that happens. We also know and is a takeaway from today, 29.65 or thereabouts, that was important. So the number worked. It just didn't give us the trade. Walgreens boots. We're going to classify this one in the category of it stunk. Let me explain this a little bit further. Getting the haircut. Look what happened at the second number. 
Here it is making a low of 38.92 against my 38.90. So had I been filled at that time on the second number, maybe would have been able to get out around even or slightly with a profit because if you're painting by the numbers, half at the first number, half at the second number, had a really nice bounce. When you take a look at even a five minute chart, you can see here, came off that number rather quickly and did or would have put that trade in a profit scenario briefly. Nonetheless, it didn't work. So I want to answer a question. This comes in on these trades that don't work. And here's the deal. We know that some trades don't work. It's the 80-20 rule. We're going to lose about 20% of the trades. That's just the way it works. 80% are winners. That means that 20% are shit burgers. But the question comes in, and it comes in kind of all day long, what happened with WBA? Why didn't it work? And here's the easy answer. I got it wrong. The first number was wrong. The second number turned out to be a circus. The stock went lower, came back. Couple of things. One minute chart, right out of the chute in the first few minutes of the day, you could see the first number tried to work. It gave about a 1% bounce. Maybe it came up a couple of cents short. But I will tell you, for the record, this trader did not take a profit there. This trader wrote it down. This trader worked it to some kind of loss. Not a big loss, a small loss. And I took a loss in this trade. It is what it is. But here's something else that I want to point out. Here's an hourly chart. Second hour of the day closes at what price? 38.17. The stop was an hourly close below 38.19. Just to add insult to injury, they have to throw that in there. It's almost like throwing in a backdoor curveball. So therefore, all that in the bucket, what comes out the other side? The trade stunk. But we had pretty good cadence in the SPY. So here's what I wanted to point out in the hourly chart. So here's a big hourly breakdown candle. What's the high of that candle? 315.41. Kind of sound familiar, that zone in there? Now... That zone was cited, or that number in there, thereabouts, if you will, was cited before the open. It was cited early in the morning before this breakdown candle high was created. How does that work? How are you doing? So you think that's going to be important on the way back up? I do. Was it? Yeah. So what do we have? Guess what? Until and unless they can close an hour at minimum above the high of that breakdown candle no dice that's why i still believe until and unless they do that there's still lower prices on the table that's my story i'm sticking to it what's going on over in camp iwm here's an hourly chart let's make the switch over my favorite market leading indicator was down two percent today that's a pretty good shellacking the s p was down right around half a percent that's a divergence let's have that conversation we have divergences what happens when we do have divergences? Well, ultimately, they're going to clear up. So here's an example of some divergences. A divergence, the IWM against the SPY. The IWM is selling pretty hard, and the SPY is not. The transports were selling pretty hard. The SPY was not. The Qs were up. Smash Mouth, SMH was up. We'll take a look at that later. These are divergences that will clear up. Remember, it's all the same market, but not necessarily all day, every day. So when we have divergences, we can count on something. Either the Qs and the SMH are going to pull everything else up with it, or they're topping out. They're going to roll over. The SPY is going to come down. The Qs are going to come down. And the transports and the IWM are giving the signal. One is my favorite market leading indicator, and the other, as we know, is a favorite canary in the coal mine. And by the way, we have the financials that we discussed the last couple of nights. That's really been a canary in the coal mine. And by now, you should have a pretty long list of notes. There is no chance that you can remember all this stuff. Look at this chart. 120 minute chart. I like to pick out stuff that stands out. This stands out. So now they have a big breakdown candle into its 200 period moving average. I'm watching this chart. Below the other three moving averages, are they going to create a bearish flaggish pattern, some kind of bearish wedgish pattern? I don't know, but they're going to do something, and I'm watching this chart. What's going on down at the transportation department? Well, here's what's going on. So it's a bullish pattern until it's not. So when you have a move off of a low like this, 
and the market hovers above the 20 period moving average like that, that's what you get. And you're likely going to move higher, fill the gap, moving average, the whole nine yards. That's one thing. But then all of a sudden, if you come down below the moving average and you closed on it today, so another bad day, and all of a sudden that little pattern becomes this, and all of a sudden it's looking like a larger bearish kind of flaggish kind of wedgish formation. Come down to fill this gap right down here. That's what that looks like. Right now, they're in this channel, and you don't know whether they're going to continue to be in this channel for quite some time. Break down below the low of the channel, we know the routine, lower. Break out above the high of the channel, again, we know the routine. Inside the channel, nothing conclusive other than we have a pretty darn good idea of what they're doing. 120 minute chart, same story, different vehicle. Same story meaning same story as the IWM. I'm watching this chart. Anything wrong with the cues? Of course not. What's going on here? It's extended, away from home base. We know the routine. It's the same routine every night. What's going on here? They're headed somewhere. Obviously. I don't mean to be Captain Obvious. I want to make a point. They're going to a destination. When they get there, it'll be over. They'll have a meaningful pullback. Right now, the question is, where is that destination? Well, let's check out the NASDAQ composite for a minute. Here's a monthly chart. It's a straight line up from the March lows. They never even looked back. Where are they headed? You're at new highs. You can't pick a high out of a hat. It doesn't work that way. You have to use logic. Where's the next logical area of overhead resistance? We're going to use big fat round numbers, semi-fat round numbers, and even semi-semi fat round numbers. So let's do it this way. We have 10,500. That's where we're at now, a little above it. You had 10,000 before. Next up, you have 11,000. What do you have in between 10,5 and 11? You have 10,750. Somewhere in this zone, in between where it is now and 11,000 or maybe a peak over 11,000, that's going to be it. That's where the market's headed. It's headed somewhere in the vicinity of between current price and 11,000, and we're ultimately going to see a more meaningful pullback other than like 25 cents in the queues. There was absolutely no science to that whatsoever. That's complete art form, logic, common sense, art form, some combination thereof. Just wanted to give you my thoughts on that. Here's our second favorite canary in the coal mine. What do we have here? Same thing we had. It's weak. It's melting away below the moving averages. It's a bearish formation. They're dripping lower. There's nothing strong slash bullish on this chart. Not right now. They'll get to a number where that changes, but right now it's bearish. We've been watching this. Without the financials, we know the routine. They're not going anywhere in either direction without participation from the financials. So what's the likelihood without the financials just turning around and shooting back up? What's the likelihood the market's going to do that without the financials? It's unlikely. Smash mouth, divergence, we talked about this. This is in the same camp as the Qs. We don't have to be harpers on this. What we'll do instead is say, have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? And that without you, these videos are not possible. True and accurate information. I'm going to pull the ripcord here today. It's everything I wanted to and intended to discuss. So I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.